Hello, this is Stephen Dupree of NowEnergetics.com, based on Ewan Method. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to look at some aspects of Ewan Method related to misinterpretation, which is the uh, hexagon of same, not same, different, not different, changing, not changing. That's the hexagon, and we've added two more perception, no perception as an octagon, but it's basically trying to figure out was whether someone can perceive a change that's already taken place. And one of the first questions we may ask someone after we've strengthened them for particular weakness that we found is same or different. And it's important for the client to be focused on noticing what's different and not what's the same. So, and in order to do that, they have to have a very clear perception. They don't, they cannot have any perception blocks. And there's an article on my website, 16 common perception blocks that gives you the basic ones. And um, so part of this article goes over kind of the session interaction that may occur when a client can't perceive a change that's already taken place when we ask them same or different. So, and this happens a lot with new clients because they have expectations. They don't know what the session is going to bring. And so when we say same or different, they may be expecting something similar to some other modality that may do a pain scale measurement. We don't do any of that. We really just look for same or different. It's a zero or one, either you notice something or you don't notice something basically. So that's a basic principle. So, um, and they may not answer the question and it's in, and it's not out of disrespect. So it's really important for us to know that we're not going to take it personally, but it's maybe an indicator that there's something in their energy that's blocking them even from answering the question. So at a real high level, if someone is giving you some kind of a story, like um, they may answer because they haven't perceived any shift. There's an article here about the perception blocks or what is perception here. Um, they may give an answer, something similar to one of these three here, where they may say, instead of answering same or different, they may say, well, it seems a little better. It's a, it changed a little, or it's, I don't know, the pain's about a six now, all, all things that we haven't asked them. But it's important to know that as a practitioner, that those answers are giving you clues to why they're not perceiving the change that you've strengthened, right? So it's, it's important not to, to, not to brush that aside and, you know, kind of keep going by rote in your, in a certain pattern, but to be in the moment and understand that that really means something. So, so what we do typically is we intuit, you know, we just think perception and the perception may go weak and then, but where do we go from here? So the person didn't really perceive anything. They're not quite answering our question, right? So where do we go next? So we know the shift actually took place and we know that something probably is blocking the client. So stay neutral. Don't badger the client into, you know, answering same or different just because that's the answer you want. And if you're not neutral with that, you got to figure out why you're not neutral with getting an answer. When you give someone a choice of answers and they're not answering your question, and if you're irritated by that, then you have to make sure you're not projecting out any of that energy. And if you have to clear that in yourself, uh, definitely do so. So we're, you know, the more important thing from a neutrality standpoint is to look at what's actually happening, what the client actually said. And you want to really just ask the question to yourself and to your intuition, you know, what's actually blocking the person from answering same or different. So instead of um, going down some different path or, or just uh, glossing it over, just we need to find out why that is the case. So, and so if someone's not answering our prompts, it really means that there's something blocking them, right? So we need to get to the bottom of what, what's blocking them for perceiving, you know, what's taking place and to fully perceive everything that's been done, the energy that's already been shifted. So, and so I, I've kind of said this somewhat already is you don't want to have some chip on your shoulder about someone not answering questions, right? So it's really, if it's in your energy, it's important to clear that if you're projecting it out, but it also means that you're not neutral in some way. So it, it's important to know that to check your own energy and so when we talk about a little bit it's usually some kind of judgment so there's a triad that 
handles that uh, element, which could be either judgment, criticism, or blaming. It's sort of called loosely the judgment triad. It could be any one of those three things, and it could be any combination of those three things. It could be one, it could be two, it could be a combination kind of weakness. So now we could always just clear the triad. You know, if it goes weak, if we're thinking that judgment goes weak, we could tell the person, or we could just say, you know, we can notice that criticism goes weak as an example, and we could just strengthen it and just ask them again, you know, what, what are you noticing? Um, and, you know, we may tell the client that, um, so little bit means judgment, and it seems like you have some little issue with judgment. So let's see how many, you know, judgments or criticisms in your energy are, are blocking you. And we may just numerically profile that. And I have a link to the numerical profiling article here, but we may ask the, the person, you know, so it's criticism and we may ask them about being criticized. They like being criticized or does it bother them to be criticized? Or we may just go into intuiting what, what and profiling how many criticisms are, you know, we can come up with as a gauge. So we may say, you know, this, you have, you have a criticism weakness. That's one of about 500,000 criticisms and, you know, gauge numerically how much that's affecting the person. In this case here, it's trillions of percent. And then we just do a delete and ask them, is it the same or different? So that's one level. And then the second time we do that and let, maybe the person still is not answering the question, same or different. So there may be other threads to pull on. In other words, so we've, we've cleared out the judgment criticism blaming triad, but we haven't, maybe there's a layer deeper, they're still not able to answer the question directly, right? So, and when we look at this, you know, very generally, what tends to happen is we want, you know, in the Western world, we want to get more complicated answer, you know, we want to go deeper into something and deeper meaning this, the answer is probably more complicated than what we just uh, worked on with criticisms. But more often, it's just the opposite, that you actually have a more abstract or general issue that's really underlying the person not being able to answer the question directly. So, and that's what we're going over here, the eight different possibilities. So here are the eight possibilities. Um, person could have something called a stubbornness energy. You know, they just have a stubbornness weakness or energy. Um, they don't like to follow directions, so you're directing them to answer a question, same or different, and they don't like following directions, that could go weak in their energy. They could have some sort of deception weakness, and there's a second article at the bottom of this page um, in the um, related article section that goes over specifically deception weakness. Um, so they're kind of bobbing and weaving and not quite wanting to answer the question. Uh, they could have just a general questioning weakness, so you may the notion of someone questioning them may trigger that they've been tested before and they don't like being tested or may have some issue with testing others, maybe karmic type of issue. So um, question, the other thing, number five is, some, you know, when someone gets asked a question, it could be, they maybe think they're being ac accused of something. So they could have what we call an accusation weakness. So, um, so that question is really a trigger and it triggers something that's weak, so they don't want to go where there's something that's weak, so they don't answer your question, as an example. So, and believe it or not, people are weak to words themselves. You know, the, uh, you'd be surprised how common it is for folks to be weak to actual words, individual words, or combinations of words. So, people, uh, the person may not uh, be able to answer because this, it weakens them to answer. Right? They don't know that consciously, but unconsciously, they they evade certain words because they go weak to those words, either by their experiences or by their ancestors' energy or whatever. Something in their experience or their energy or their thought is creating this uh, manifestation that they can't answer the question in that way. So, And so the important thing as a practitioner is don't, don't go through the session by road and force them to answer the question the way you want it to be answered. Understand that there's something blocking them from answering that question in that way and it may be something as abstract as we talked about up here is it's usually a more abstract or general level issue. Well, if someone has, you know, a general issue with the word same or different or, or uh, change or perception or any of those words, it's going to weaken them to even, you know, uh, to even say those words out loud 
or read them or have someone else say them. You know, it could be any number of things. So it's important to know that intuitively you can check that in their energy. Number eight is a person may be just weak to choosing, you know, the, the word choosing, the notion of choosing, the idea that you have, a, have to choose at all, you know, um, maybe they had a experience where they had no choices or they gave someone else no choices or so there's all these different threads you can go down with choices. It's very deep there, but at a really high level, it's a very simple uh, kind of concept is they're weak to choosing. So that may be affecting them, the, the, their ability to choose between two answers, same or different. So they may have a weakness to choosing between two things, but they may be fine with choosing more than two things, like three things or four things. So it may just be two. And so they have a more general weakness. So, so it's important to, you know, again, as we're going through the session here, we're not, we're not forcing anything. We're going with the flow of the session and what goes weak because we want to clear these basic things or the session is not going to go as well as you want it to go. And if you have, you know, follow on sessions, it's, it's not going to go as, as well as you'd like. So, so it's really important. And even clearing your own energy, it's important to clear these very basic things that could be very general and abstract, but very deep and uh, make sure that we're, we're more neutral to these types of concepts. So, but here, you know, here's an example where, you know, we go over, that one of the eight goes weak. And let's say we just chose number four, which happens to be the general questioning weakness. Okay, so, so as, a, as a practitioner, you may intuit that they have some energy that they like to ask a lot of questions because basically if they ask all the questions, they don't have to answer any questions, right? So that's, a, that's an energy that uh, they may not even realize that their whole life that they've been a questioner, you know, but they don't like being questioned. And that may be how that manifests in their experience or in their mannerisms is that they just seen as this person that's always asking questions, right? And it's because they're avoiding answering questions and they're avoiding answering questions because they have a weakness to answering questions. So as an example, so you ask the client that and they may, they may know that kind of a little bit, yeah, but they may not know that it actually weakens them, you know? So you may want to relay that kind of story. You may, because you've intuited that you may, ask them the question here. So that's what we're doing here, that you like ask, asking a lot of questions here, but you don't like answering questions. So, and that they, person may actually get angry because they have some experiences where there's anger associated with answering questions or being accused of something. So there's, there could be several layers of this and that they go weak to, and that's, that's why it manifests this way in their experience. So um, especially if they're rushed, a lot of folks don't like being rushed. So if you ask a question, you want an answer too quickly, it could also be a weakness, right? It's a, it's a time weakness kind of thing with answering, right? And you could just ask them, you know, do you have experiences like that and let them relay a story because what you want to do is have them relay a story that's true in their experience. And then you want to take that one story and say, well, that's one story of many other stories that, weakens your energy to actually answering questions, right? You're good at asking, you're not good at answering, and it's because your energy goes weak to that. So here, we just saw an example here of lassoing up 500,000 experiences of questions. And it's mostly an answering question, but we wanna clear it very generally and completely, whether you're asking this question, you're answering a question, or you just see a question, people may be, look at a question on a sheet of paper and it weakens them, you know, it's a, there's no, it could be all kinds of experiences of questioning. So we want to keep it as general as possible. So the clearing will be as deep as possible, but at a general level, you don't want to get too specific if you don't have to. So there, here's an example of, of doing that. And then, you know, we clear that, you know, here, anytime I have intuit in a, uh, in brackets, it's kind of like you're pausing for a second to profile the number so you're creating this lasso of 100, 500,000 things, and you're just going to delete them as a bulk thing, right? We're going to throw it all in the trash can type of thing. So that's really what's going on here. So, and you relay this, you know, you kind of relay what you're doing here, that they have a questioning weakness, or it could be just there's too many unanswered questions they have in their energy, right? So there's, you know, multiple things, asking, answering, questioning other people, having too many unanswered questions. That's a very, very 
common thing is that people get blocked because they uh, they have so many unanswered questions. They don't want another question. It's like they're waving it away. It's like, don't ask me any more questions, right? Because they have so many unanswered questions that you put one more on the pile. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back. So that could, you could ferret that out intuitively in their energy. They just don't want to be questioned any further, let's say. So, so we clear all that, you know, silently, or you may tell the person, and then you ask, same or different about anyone asking you questions. And the client, let's say in the best case, the client says it's different. I don't care about questions anymore. So let's say we're, we're dealing with a shoulder pain. So they couldn't perceive anything. And we go down this questioning route. And now we clear the questioning route, uh, questioning issue, which is blocking their perception just at a very simple level. And so we get to them to admit that the questioning doesn't bother them anymore. And then we say, well, now how's your shoulder? same or different and maybe their shoulder is completely they're perceiving 100 percent now because they don't have the questioning weakness that was uh triggered by us you know just simply asking you know we strengthen something about your shoulder same or different and they go down this path you know and of saying it's a little bit or whatever and we really have a real basic abstract issue of being questioned that was completely blocking any perception of let's say pain in their knee or shoulder whatever some other issue, they couldn't get even to that point because they can't be questioned about it, right? So it's really, it's a very abstract thing, but it's, it's actually a pretty good exercise to go through. This happens more often than you think that people have weaknesses to being questioned. And we have to figure that out really, really early on if you wanna have a good session. You know, you don't wanna go by rote and try to get through the session in your half hour or something like that. You really wanna figure out what's blocking a person in the best possible case and walk them through kind of the process. And there's sometimes when you wanna say what you've intuited, sometimes you don't want to, but it's really important to do this kind of deep clearing in their perception so that the next, the subsequent sessions and even them using the method for themselves to clear things, they'll be very uh, kind of open and neutral about questioning in general, right? So there are two related articles here. Two of them are, um, can you tell the difference in the energy of improvement? It's something similar to this kind of um, same or different questioning weakness. And I invite you to read those articles and thank you for watching.